Communication with patient is very important. Part of healthcare, valuable information can be obtained during the interview phase. There are some things you can do to ensure that you get the most accurate data during this time. Let's look at a few. The first one is appropriate time. The interview should not occur when the client is distracted by visitors. Procedures such as blood draws or change of shift, or when the client is in intense pain. The second one to consider is to ensure privacy. You may need to close the door, pull the chair up close to the client, or wait until visitors have left to ask the client personal questions. Third thing is proper approach. When you approach a client, you should let him know who you are, right? Introduce yourself what job you do for the hospital, and the reason you are interacting at this moment. If the visit with the client will be time-consuming, let the patient know how long the process should take. Do not act rushed or hurried when interacting with your clients. If you are rushed, wait and talk with them. Once you have done whatever task it is that has your mind preoccupied, the fourth thing to keep in mind is client comfort. If the patient is cold, uncomfortable, or in pain, you need to intervene before attempting long conversations assessments and treatments. It is also important to hush and listen, encourage the client and others to express their thoughts and feelings. Listening to the client will help you to identify areas that require focus and further attention. Lastly, it is always important to use a non-judgmental approach. As the nurse, you need to accept clients exactly as they are. A judgmental attitude is easily identified by the client, and that immediately blocks effective communication. There are many techniques that can be used to improve communication. For example, face-to-face -face listening. Face your clients when they are speaking to you and you to them. Listen to, don't just hear what your clients are telling you. Allow the client time to formulate thoughts. This may lead to questions they may have. Second technique is nonverbal actions. Do the client's nonverbal actions match his words? Assess actions just as you do language. Observing is also important. Make note of client behaviors and seek the reason. For example, you seem angry today. Broad openings and general leads are always good ways to lead a conversation. For example, what would you like to discuss today? Or broad statements like, I would like to hear more about. Similarly, open-ended questions allow more free-flowing conversation. This enables you to gather more information while keeping the client focused on important issues. For example, how are you feeling today? Validating is always necessary. Make sure you and the client are interpreting the topic and message the same way. Similarly, restating something to make the client understand it or bringing back the conversation to back the topic being discussed if the conversation gets sidetracked, these all are important techniques that help carry a good conversation. Make sure that you have provided all the information. Information decreases client anxiety. Lastly, it is important to summarize. State briefly what has been discussed in the conversation. For example, during the past few minutes, we have talked about such and such. 